This is most likely the end of the U.S. economy. Recently, a notable trend has emerged as several African countries have started repatriating their gold and foreign reserves from the USA. Nations like Nigeria, Ghana, and Cameroon are leading this significant shift, which marks a profound change in global financial dynamics and indicates a broader realignment in geopolitical relationships. For these African countries, bringing their reserves back home is more than just a financial maneuver. It is a powerful statement of economic sovereignty and self-determination. This move reflects a growing weariness of the U.S. economic system and a desire for greater financial independence. By repatriating their reserves, these nations assert control over their financial assets and reduce their reliance on the U.S. economy, which is perceived as fraught with political and economic risks. The implications of this trend are far-reaching. For the U.S., the withdrawal of foreign reserves could pose a significant threat to its economy. The U.S. benefits from holding these assets, which bolster its liquidity and the strength of the U.S. dollar. As more countries repatriate their reserves, the U.S. may face economic repercussions, including reduced liquidity and a potential weakening of its currency. The decision by African nations to repatriate their gold is part of a larger global movement, with several European countries having already taken similar steps. This growing trend could inspire even more nations to follow suit, leading to a significant shift in the global economic landscape. To address this challenge, the U.S. may need to reassess its economic policies and strengthen diplomatic relations. Offering more favorable economic terms and addressing the concerns of these nations could be potential strategies to mitigate the impact of this trend. The recent trend of African countries repatriating their gold and foreign reserves from the USA signals a growing mistrust in the stability and security of storing assets in the USA, particularly in light of recent geopolitical events and financial disruptions. But why was this step taken, and what is the context behind this decision? This move is not an isolated incident, but part of a broader global pattern influenced by geopolitical tensions, economic instability, and a re-evaluation of trust in major financial institutions. In the past few years, the global geopolitical landscape has changed dramatically, with increasing tensions between major powers and a series of financial disruptions shaking confidence in traditional safe havens. One pivotal event that has influenced this trend is the economic sanctions imposed on Russia following its invasion of Ukraine. The seizure of Russia's sovereign wealth funds by Western countries has been a wake-up call for many nations, prompting them to reconsider the safety of their assets held abroad, particularly in the USA. This incident highlighted the potential vulnerability of foreign reserves stored in a country to political leverage or sanctions. Additionally, the COVID-19 pandemic exposed vulnerabilities in global financial systems, leading many countries to rethink their reliance on foreign-held reserves. The pandemic's economic fallout has made nations more aware of the need for financial independence and the risks associated with storing large reserves in foreign institutions. African countries, in particular, have been motivated by a desire to assert economic sovereignty and reduce dependence on Western financial systems. By repatriating their gold and foreign reserves, these nations aim to strengthen their domestic economies, increase control over their financial assets, and protect themselves from potential geopolitical and economic risks. For many African nations, the possibility that their assets could be frozen or seized due to geopolitical tension is a risk they are no longer willing to take. This has driven a reassessment of where and how to store national wealth, leading to the decision to bring assets back home. While mainstream media often focuses on larger, more apparent geopolitical events, numerous significant developments tend to go unnoticed but have substantial implications. Financial crises in various parts of the world and increasing debt levels in both developed and developing countries have led to a volatile economic environment. Countries with large reserves abroad are particularly concerned about the stability and reliability of these funds amidst such instability. The unpredictable nature of global markets has highlighted the vulnerability of holding reserves in foreign countries, especially when geopolitical tensions are high. Moreover, there has been a growing movement towards economic nationalism and self-reliance. Countries are increasingly looking inward, striving to build resilient domestic economies that are less dependent on external forces. This shift is partly a reaction to the unpredictable nature of global markets and the desire to insulate national economies from external shocks. 
repatriating gold and foreign reserves is a crucial step towards achieving this economic self-sufficiency for African countries. The decision to repatriate assets is also influenced by recent geopolitical events. For example, the economic sanctions imposed on Russia following its invasion of Ukraine and the subsequent seizure of Russia's sovereign wealth funds by Western countries have served as a wake-up call. These actions have underscored the potential risks associated with storing assets abroad, prompting nations to reconsider their strategies. African nations have taken significant steps to repatriate their foreign reserves, driven by concerns over the long-term security of their assets and a desire to bolster economic sovereignty. Nigeria has approximately $325 billion in foreign reserves and has been proactive in its repatriation efforts. This move is influenced by several factors, including the need to stabilize its currency and manage financial resources more effectively. By restoring its reserves, Nigeria aims to reduce its exposure to international financial risks and gain greater control over its economic future. This action also strengthens the country's financial infrastructure and builds public confidence in the domestic economy. The repatriation of reserves allows Nigeria to use these funds to support domestic economic activities, mitigate currency fluctuations, and enhance overall economic stability. Ghana, with around $9.9 .9 billion in foreign reserves, has also decided to repatriate its assets. By holding its reserves domestically, Ghana aims to use these funds more effectively to support economic growth and development initiatives. This move is part of a broader strategy to promote economic self-sufficiency and reduce reliance on external financial systems. By repatriating its reserves, Ghana seeks to enhance its financial autonomy, enabling the government to allocate resources towards infrastructure projects, social programs, and other national priorities. Cameroon has approximately $3.5 billion in foreign reserves and has joined Nigeria and Ghana in the repatriation effort. For Cameroon, repatriating reserves is a strategic move to build financial stability and public trust in the government's economic management. Holding reserves domestically allows Cameroon to better respond to economic challenges and leverage its financial resources to promote national development. This action ensures that the country's financial assets are safeguarded from external geopolitical risks and can be readily available to address domestic economic needs. The actions taken by Nigeria, Ghana, and Cameroon reflect a broader trend across Africa, where other nations are closely observing these developments and considering similar measures. This collective movement towards repatriation is part of a larger shift towards economic sovereignty and regional cooperation. African countries are increasingly collaborating on economic initiatives such as the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA, which aims to create a single market for goods and services across the continent. By repatriating reserves, African nations are better positioned to support these regional initiatives and build a more integrated and resilient African economy. The decision to repatriate gold and foreign reserves from the USA is driven by a complex interplay of economic, political, and security considerations. This movement reflects a growing desire among African nations to assert greater control over their financial resources and reduce dependence on external actors. Understanding the underlying reasons behind this trend is essential for comprehending its significance and potential long-term implications. At the heart of the repatriation movement, lie economic considerations. Countries like Nigeria, Ghana, and Cameroon recognize the importance of safeguarding their financial assets to promote economic stability and sustainable development. By repatriating their reserves, these nations aim to mitigate risks such as exposure to currency fluctuations and geopolitical tensions. Moreover, repatriation allows African countries to diversify their investment portfolios and allocate resources more effectively to support domestic development priorities. Holding reserves domestically enables nations to mobilize these funds to finance infrastructure projects, stimulate economic growth, and address pressing social needs, thus contributing to long-term prosperity and resilience. Political and security considerations also influence the decision. African nations are increasingly wary of the potential risks associated with storing assets in foreign jurisdictions. Recent geopolitical tensions and financial disruptions have heightened concerns about the security and stability of assets abroad, prompting countries to reassess their financial dependencies. 
For African governments, repatriating reserves represents a proactive measure to protect national wealth and assert sovereignty over financial resources. These nations aim to minimize external vulnerabilities by repatriating assets, ensuring their economic futures remain firmly under their control. This move is not solely about economic pragmatism, but also about asserting independence and autonomy on the global stage. Beyond its practical implications, repatriation carries significant symbolic weight for African countries. Bringing assets home represents a powerful assertion of economic sovereignty and self-determination. It sends a clear message to the international community that these nations can manage their financial affairs independently and are no longer willing to rely on external actors for their economic well-being. Moreover, repatriation serves as a tangible expression of confidence in domestic institutions and faith in the future trajectory of African economies. It demonstrates a willingness to confront historical legacies of economic exploitation and assert agency in shaping a more equitable and prosperous future. Repatriation is as much about reclaiming control over national wealth as it is about reclaiming dignity and self-worth. One of the most immediate repercussions of African countries' repatriation efforts is the impact on the reputation of the U.S. financial system as a haven for foreign assets. Historically, the USA has been viewed as a stable and reliable destination for storing reserves, attracting governments and central banks worldwide. However, the decision of African nations to bring their assets back home signals a loss of confidence in the security and stability of the U.S. financial infrastructure. This erosion of trust could significantly affect the U.S. dollar's status as the world's primary reserve currency. If more countries follow suit and repatriate their reserves, it could diminish the demand for U.S. dollars in global markets, potentially weakening its value and undermining its role as a global reserve currency. This, in turn, could have ripple effects across the global economy, impacting trade, investment, and financial stability. The repatriation trend also reflects broader shifts in geopolitical dynamics and the distribution of global power. African countries' decision to assert greater control over their financial resources signals a desire to reduce dependence on traditional Western powers and diversify their economic relationships. This move aligns with a broader trend of multipolarity in international relations, with emerging economies seeking to assert themselves globally. Moreover, the repatriation trend could lead to re-evaluating existing alliances and partnerships as African nations seek to strengthen ties with countries that offer greater economic opportunities and strategic advantages. This could result in new geopolitical alignments and regional cooperation frameworks, reshaping the geopolitical landscape in Africa and beyond. The repatriation of gold and foreign reserves by African countries could significantly affect global financial markets. The withdrawal of assets from the USA may increase volatility in international markets as investors react to the redistribution of financial resources. This shift could impact asset prices, exchange rates, and interest rates, potentially disrupting global economic activity. Additionally, this trend could accelerate the de-dollarization process as countries seek to reduce their reliance on the US dollar in international trade and finance. This shift could lead to a diversification of reserve currencies and the emergence of alternative financial systems, challenging the dominance of the U.S. dollar and reshaping the global monetary landscape. Global financial institutions would need to respond to this trend by adapting to the changing preferences and priorities of their member countries. Institutions such as the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the World Bank may need to reconsider their lending policies and investment strategies to meet the evolving needs of African nations and other emerging economies. Furthermore, the repatriation trend could increase competition among financial centers as countries vie to attract foreign reserves and investments, potentially redistributing financial power and influence and allowing new players to emerge as key global finance hubs. Historically, similar actions have been taken by other nations, reflecting a broader trend of reassessing financial dependencies and asserting greater control over national wealth. For instance, Venezuela provides a compelling case study of repatriation driven by economic instability and political tensions. In 2011, the Venezuelan government announced its intention to repatriate gold reserves held in foreign banks, citing concerns about the safety and security of these assets. 
This decision was influenced by rising political tensions with Western powers and a desire to assert greater control over the country's financial resources. Despite numerous challenges, including logistical hurdles and legal disputes with foreign banks, Venezuela repatriated a significant portion of its gold reserves, signaling a commitment to economic sovereignty and independence. The Venezuelan experience underscores the importance of political stability and effective governance in facilitating successful repatriation efforts. The decision to repatriate assets by African nations is influenced significantly by external factors such as geopolitical tensions. Several European countries, including the Netherlands, Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, have also engaged in similar efforts, repatriating gold reserves from foreign vaults, including those in the USA. These actions stem from concerns over the stability of the international financial system and a desire to reduce reliance on foreign institutions. Repatriation serves as a prudent risk management strategy for these European countries, aiming to safeguard national wealth amidst an increasingly volatile global environment. The European experience emphasizes the importance of diversification and risk mitigation in managing national reserves and highlights the impact of public sentiment and political pressure, particularly during periods of economic uncertainty and geopolitical instability. Argentina provides another illustrative case of repatriation driven by financial disruptions and economic challenges. Facing significant economic volatility, including currency devaluation and debt crises, Argentina reassessed its financial strategy. In 2012, the Argentine government announced plans to repatriate a portion of its gold reserves from the USA, motivated by concerns over the safety and security of these assets. This move aimed to strengthen the country's financial position and reduce exposure to external risks. The Argentine experience underscores the importance of proactive risk management and strategic planning in addressing economic challenges, as well as the crucial role of political will and leadership in driving repatriation efforts amidst external pressures and uncertainties. Lessons from the cases of Venezuela, European countries, and Argentina offer valuable insights for African nations undertaking repatriation efforts. These examples highlight the necessity of political stability, effective governance, and proactive risk management in facilitating successful repatriation. They also stress the need for meticulous planning, coordination, and communication to overcome logistical challenges and legal obstacles. Repatriation is not a straightforward process and requires careful consideration of economic conditions, geopolitical dynamics, and domestic priorities. Furthermore, these country experiences underline the broader implications of repatriation for global finance and international relations. As more countries assert greater control over their financial resources, the balance of power in the global financial system is likely to shift, reshaping the dynamics of economic cooperation and competition. African nations will face several challenges in their repatriation efforts, including navigating complex logistical and legal issues, maintaining political stability, and ensuring effective governance. They will also need to manage the economic implications of repatriation and address any domestic and international reactions to their decisions. African countries undertaking repatriation will face external pressures from foreign governments, financial institutions, and other stakeholders with vested interests in maintaining the status quo. These pressures could manifest as economic sanctions, financial penalties, or diplomatic isolation aimed at discouraging African nations from repatriating their assets. To withstand these pressures, African countries must demonstrate resilience, resolve, and unity in their repatriation objectives. Building strong alliances with like-minded countries, diversifying economic relationships, and reducing dependence on external actors can help African nations assert greater autonomy and sovereignty over their financial resources. Another challenge associated with repatriation is the potential impact on currency markets and financial stability. The sudden influx of repatriated assets could put pressure on domestic currencies, leading to exchange rate volatility or inflationary pressures. Additionally, repatriation could disrupt international financial markets, affecting asset prices, interest rates, and investor confidence. To mitigate these risks, African countries must adopt prudent financial management strategies, including careful timing and phasing of repatriation efforts, diversification of reserves, and coordination with monetary authorities to ensure smooth market operations. 
enhancing transparency and communication with market participants can also help mitigate uncertainty and build confidence in the stability of domestic currencies and financial markets. As African countries repatriate their assets from the USA, they will likely diversify their reserve holdings to reduce risk and maximize returns. This trend towards diversification may involve reallocating assets across various asset classes, including equities, bonds, real estate, and commodities, to optimize portfolio performance and enhance financial resilience. Additionally, African countries may explore opportunities for strategic investments in sectors critical to long-term economic development, such as infrastructure, renewable energy, and technology. By diversifying their reserve holdings and investing in high-impact projects, African countries can strengthen their economic foundations and create sustainable sources of growth and prosperity. Looking to the future, African countries and the international community must collaborate to support and facilitate repatriation efforts. This requires addressing the root causes of economic inequality, promoting inclusive growth, and creating an enabling environment for economic empowerment and self-determination. Furthermore, it requires a commitment to upholding the principles of sovereignty, solidarity, and mutual respect in international relations, fostering a more equitable and just world order. Is Africa headed towards success after repatriating its reserves from the USA? The recent decision to repatriate gold and foreign reserves from the USA signals a strategic shift towards economic sovereignty, resilience, and self-reliance, suggesting a positive trajectory for African nations. Several reasons support the decision to repatriate reserves, positioning Africa for success. Bringing financial assets home asserts economic independence, allowing African countries to control their economic destiny and reduce reliance on foreign financial systems. Domestic investment in financial infrastructure can strengthen local banks, encouraging economic activity and growth. Collaboration among countries like Nigeria, Ghana, and Cameroon can enhance regional financial cooperation, creating a more resilient system. Repatriation also insulates against global financial shocks, contributing to stability. Strategic investments in infrastructure, healthcare, education, and technology further drive sustainable development and improve quality of life. Overall, repatriating reserves signifies Africa's path to economic sovereignty, stronger financial systems, and resilience against global risks. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.